Hello, everybody, and welcome to this online open date, which focuses on the MA music production course here at LCC, London College of Communication. Um, this is a brief introduction. Um, my name is Adam Stanovich. I'm the program director for Sound of Music, which essentially means head of the Sound of Music department at London College of Communication. Um, a little bit about me, so you have some context. Um, I'm a composer, and I compose electronic music, more specifically electroacoustic music. So what you can see on the screen there is three of my solo uh, albums, um, which feature a range of pieces of uh, electroacoustic music. The one in the middle is the most recent. That has its um, album launch uh, a week on Saturday up in Sheffield and alongside composing I perform and so you can see on the screen here a couple of recent performances that I've given the one on the left was earlier this year in uh, April in Paris and I perform using large array loudspeaker systems so this was a system uh, built for the performance of electroacoustic music originally built in the 1970s and is still performing to this day with bespoke loudspeakers designed for electroacoustic music. Um, so I'm going to be talking you through the MA Music Production uh, course as it is currently designed and a couple of housekeeping things. There's a lot of text on the screen but um, briefly there is an option to write any questions that you have as I'm talking in the little box on the control panel that you can see. And then at the end, I'll leave plenty of time to answer any questions that you've put in there. Um, but otherwise, you are currently on mute um, to help basically with the quality of the open date. Um, there's a couple of contact details there that you may be interested in if you have non-course specific questions. So I'm here really to answer any questions about the course itself and then things about accommodation or applications um, can be directed to any of these various addresses. Happy to share those again at the end if this is too fast for you to catch them. So um, I wanted to start just by firstly um, talking about the London College of Communication. Um, as you can see on the screen there, uh, text on the right hand side. Um, we are an institute which focuses specifically on practice. So the most of the um, courses, degrees which are hosted at LCC, there is an ethos of learning through doing. So practice being at the core of um, most forms of uh, teaching. Um, we think that our facilities are state of the art and that's certainly um, true of the MA Music Production course. I'll come to this a little bit later, but we've just built brand new studio facilities which are for music production. Um, and as with most of the courses at LCC, there is a combination of theory and practice in the sense that we want all graduates of LCC to be able to articulate what their practice is and what they do in their practice um, and put their practice in the context of others. Um, LCC is one of the six colleges which make up the University of the Arts, um, which is very recently, 2021, ranked second in the world for art and design at the QS World Rankings. And I think quite excitingly, there's a diverse student body of around about 18,000 students from across 130 different countries. Um, so a very global uh, institution. So specifically about music production, um, the music production course is housed in the Screen School and the Screen School is divided into three separate programs. So you can see the three programs here on your screen. There's film and television and you can see the courses listed underneath that particular uh, department. There is moving image and digital arts and then over to the right hand side of your screen, sound and music. So you can see that we're one of the smaller um, departments within the Screen School uh, with just the four courses. But I wanted to show you this slide because later on uh, we talk a little bit about collaboration 
And one of the things that's key to the MA music production is the opportunity to collaborate right across the screen school um, or wider across the whole of the UAL. Um, but you can see here some of the many exciting opportunities to collaborate with, say, MA games design or virtual reality or film, documentary film, and so on. So the MA Music Production sits alongside the MA Sound Arts, of course, which has been running for many years. Um, and we hope very much that there's a great deal of communication and collaboration across these two courses, which again, I'll come to a little bit later on. Um, within the Screen School, three main sort of um, ideas which are driving what we're trying to do. One is this idea of being future facing. So trying to think about what the future of um, practice is within, in this case, music production and focusing upon how the industry and academic sort of theoretical positioning of the future may be ingrained within the course. All of our courses are very hands-on and involve practice right at the core of them. And as I mentioned before, um, we're an extremely global institution, and that idea of the global is fully embedded within the uh, curriculum and many of the things that we try to do with the, the course. So these are three sort of main um, terms which define the ethos and activity within the course. So now we get on to what you're really here for, which is um, thinking about the MA music production. So why the MA Music Production? Well, this is um, an ideal opportunity to focus your creative practice. So um, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to dedicate a 15 month period to your own music production practice. Uh, the course itself has been designed with your practice at the heart. So the idea is that you are able to spend this period of time defining and refining your creative voice within the broad area of music production. Um, embedded within the course are many opportunities for collaboration. So music production is a highly collaborative um, type of practice. So whatever form of music production you're interested in, you are going to collaborate with people. And so the course is designed with the collaborative idea embedded right from the beginning and running throughout. Um, the course is music industry aligned in the sense that it's been designed alongside industry practitioners. Two weeks ago, I sat on an industry panel with three invited practitioners from various different parts of the music industry to scrutinize this course and its aims, objectives, and the various units. Um, and we've also worked alongside the um, Joint Audio Media Education Support um, body, which is um, an accrediting body for um, all forms of music curricula, but particularly music production, which intersects with industry. So there's a very professional focus for the MA music production. Uh, who studies on the MA music production? Well, this is a new course. It's starting for the first time in September 2023. But what we're very much expecting is that this new course will replicate the types of um, student uh, demographic that we have on other courses, which is extremely diverse and fundamentally interested in all things sonic. Um, we're not trying to, at any stage, define for you what music production is but creating a framework in which you can self-determine your idea of music production and then pursue that. So somebody who's got their own particular creative voice or their own particular creative interest that they want to spend a dedicated period of time pursuing. Um, we imagine that our students will be curious, open-minded, experimental, collaborative, and I think very much of music production as a highly experimental form of practice, particularly with the various technologies that you'll have on offer at LCC. And finally, interested fundamentally in developing your skills, knowledge, industry experience. 
people starting on any MA will generally come to the course with um, various degrees of expertise in different areas and won't have all necessarily studied the same um, undergraduate degree. Uh, indeed, some people may not have studied an undergraduate degree at all and may be coming from some form of um, relevant previous industry experience. Um, so it's an opportunity really to focus on the things that you think will be beneficial to you and your practice overall. So what you can see on the screen now is um, a diagram of the course as it stands. So the course has just recently been through its validation. So some of the things that I say for the next three or four slides um, may change slightly, um, but this is certainly what we're working to at the moment. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a 15 month master's degree. So in a sense, it's a little unusual for a master's degree within the UK, most of them being exactly one year. Um, ours is 15 months. So what you can see here is a sort of snapshot of right across those 15 months. And that big gray line down the right hand side, which says PG summer break, um, that is the essentially the summer holidays. And then following that, there's a few more months of the, the course post summer. Um, so I'm going to talk you through the individual modules in a moment. And this is probably where I go into most most detail because I think that's probably where most people are interested in, in what actually happens on the course. But I wanted to show you this to give a sense of how the whole degree um, plays out. So we have these blue blocks showing the individual uh, modules or as we call them at LCC units. And you can see that most of these units run um, on their own. So most of them, so these two, for instance, um, practice of music production and music industry practices are running independently. There's nothing else really running alongside them. Um, that's because these are large modules which have 40 credits attached to them. So credits are basically to do with the size and weighting of the individual uh, module or unit. Um, the only exception to that is where we have these two critical perspectives on music production and collaborative unit running simultaneously. These are slightly smaller in terms of their credit weighting, 20 credits each. So these run simultaneously. Um, and then the largest module on the entire degree is this one down at the bottom right hand side, the final major project, which is uh, 60 credits, which accounts for therefore a third of the MA course itself. Um, the other thing to draw your attention to is these little yellow boxes um, which have an S in them. Um, that's where you will submit uh, your coursework for each of the individual um, units and which would then be of course assessed and marked. So I'll go into a little bit of detail on those um, individual units to tell you what they cover and what's in them. Um, but before I do so, so the course itself has been designed with three central curriculum areas or curriculum strands. So at the beginning of the course, um, and this loosely maps on to term one, the autumn term, um, you'll focus on technical and research practices. Um, the spring term, term two, focuses on industry and collaborative practices. Uh, the summer term, term three, focuses on production delivery. And all of these three that I've mentioned combine in that final uh, autumn term four, where you complete your major project, which is that 60 credit module. So essentially that works out like this. Hopefully you can see the red text. So I've divided this by the various modules that are covered on the course. and Maybe this is a good opportunity to talk you through them. So we start in the autumn term, which will be late September, early October 2023, with a module called the Practice of Music Production. Now this is a um, core module, and I think a very important one in the sense that it tries to bring 
all of the students on the course to a similar technical uh, production level. So some students on the course may have previously studied a BA music production, um, but a great deal of people on the course may have studied something uh, completely different. They may have done uh, BA uh, sound engineering or BA music technology, or maybe a traditional music degree, but chosen the production or technology modules. So people will have different skill sets and different, different forms of practice. And so this is an opportunity really to ensure that um, people are able to um, fulfill the various different requirements of uh, master's level study technically um, through using uh, the lab facilities, so DAWs, for instance, um, but also the studio facilities. So be able to run a recording session and mix the result of that session. So there's a great deal of um, technical training, particularly at the start of this module, ensuring that people's skill set is going to be sufficient to complete the M8. Um, but we also start focusing your attention a little bit more on ways of uh, understanding and articulating and contextualizing that technical practice, which is where the research practice part comes in. Um, so the module takes various different um, strands and connects them. So one of the strands is looking at the digital audio workspace, DAW, and that runs within our Mac lab and will typically focus on um, the use of uh, various different DAW options for uh, music production. And specifically, it'll look at um, ways of integrating audio and MIDI and um, high level ways of um, editing, mixing, and signal routing within uh, audio and MIDI environments. Um, it will also combine a great deal of studio practice. So we have one large teaching room which holds an audience heritage desk, which is where um, a lot of the larger group teaching takes place. Um, and by larger group, I'm thinking around about 20 or so students. Um, and then you'll have access to studio facilities. I'll talk about those later, but as small groups to actually complete coursework. So this first and introductory unit is really a snapshot of what happens throughout the whole degree in the sense that it enshrines that core idea that I mentioned earlier, that we want people on the course to be able to have time and space to develop their own idea about what music production is and follow their own creative interests within the broad area of music production. Um, but we also recognize that music production is inherently collaborative. So part of the assessment for this particular module will be on a collaborative project with other students, but then you'll take that collaborative project and then create your own um, music production work with that. So it's sort of modeled on a, a real world or industry approach to music production, where initially there'll be some degree of skills audit team working, but then there'll be your individual stamp impressed upon the uh, creative work that you do. Um, moving on to uh, this um, second term, two units here, as I mentioned before, both 20 credits. One is a university-wide collaborative unit, which is handily called collaborative unit. And this is built into just about all of the MA courses right across University of the Arts. And it run, they all run at exactly the same time. And this to me seems like a wonderful opportunity because it means that everybody right across the whole of University of the Arts on a master's course is looking for collaborative opportunities. And of course, music and music production particularly is nowadays integrated with just about all of the art forms that UAL covers. So this is an opportunity for you to find collaborations across the institution in which people are interested in or searching for music. So that might be collaborations with people on the MA computer games, designing sound for computer games or virtual reality as an MA virtual reality. So looking at ways in which you could create sound for um, 
VA games, for instance, um, or some form of documentary or, um, or film and television. So there's many, many options here where you can collaborate. And um, the idea here is that as a team of collaborators, you uh, determine your own project, which suits your own particular interests. Um, but it will result in a piece of creative work for which you will be responsible for the music production part of that collaboration. Uh, the module which runs alongside that, Critical Perspectives on Music Production, is largely a theoretical module and I think occupies a central place within the MA music production, hence being roughly in the center of the curriculum. Um, very important that you're not simply able to do your practice in a studio or in a lab, but that you're able to talk about that practice, explain how it relates to the practices of others. In other words, put it in some sort of context that has meaning for other people. So a large part of this module is given over to um, understanding ways of putting your own practice in a wider context and of course being critical on those wider contexts so where have they come from why do they look the way they look uh, where are they heading in the future and how do you, you and your particular interests help to design and shape the future of music production as it as it will be um, moving on we have in this summer term so this is the module immediately before you go on the the summer break um a unit called music industry practices and this is something that um ual and lcc are very excited about and keen on which is that um, all courses have a, a direction and a connection with industry so i mentioned before that um i've just sat on a panel of three industry practitioners to talk specifically about this MA music production. Um, and that's something which we have embedded right through the MA music production. So there are going to be fortnightly visiting lectures or guest lectures by industry practitioners who are going to talk about their practice, um, for instance. But in this case, we plan to uh, co-design the assessment with industry so that you have a real world opportunity to fulfill an industry brief and have guided input and support from people from industry in the design and delivery of that brief um, again there is an element of um, autonomy built into this so the brief is sufficiently open that you can approach it from many different perspectives but very clearly part of the brief has been designed and said in ways that you would expect within the field of music production. So one of the very interesting things that came up out of the industry panel was about how music producers stamp their um, creative voice on something, but how they do that in collaboration with say artists or bands or um, recording, uh, recording people. And so that intersection of somebody else's vision and your own and where quite you meet and how you design or co-design creative practice. Um, this final um, term is set aside for your own major project. And as I mentioned, this is the 60 credit, so the large um, module, which constitutes a third of the MA. And this is very much designed by you. And it can be a solo piece of work that just you're involved in. It can be collaborative work. It can be mixed media. So it could be something which is collaborating outside of music production. Really, this is your opportunity to build a large portfolio, show reel, sound reel of your creative practice and emerge from the degree with a substantial body of work which demonstrates your own creative interest. So returning now just for a moment back to this course diagram, hopefully that gives you a sense of how the 
uh, course has been designed, starting at the beginning more with um, uh, technical learning and learning of research techniques, and then as the degree moves on, putting those in practice until you emerge at the end with a, an entirely um, individually designed uh, project which is showcasing your own uh, music production interests. So I mentioned, I think, probably enough about collaboration to to go through um, this slide in detail. But just to highlight, really, that I think um, within the Screen School, this course is very um, fortunate, is very well housed in the sense that there's opportunities to collaborate with film, television, animation, games, design, virtual reality. And those are embedded in that unit, the collaborative unit. Um, likewise, I think I've mentioned connections with industry probably enough, but here you can see on this second bullet point down the um, Joint Audio Media Education Support um, accrediting body, which is called JAMES. So we're in the process of applying to them for accreditation for this course. Um, but we have already involved the whole JAMES committee on the design of this course. It's been designed with their uh, support and help. We're also an avid learning partner. So we have the opportunity for Pro Tools training. We do the 101 and 110 training for anybody who either doesn't have it or is interested in, in acquiring that as a certified uh, user of that um, software. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is the links into research. So we have the, I think, UAL's largest research center, I think, which is located um, right next to the sound and music program or sound and music department. This is called CRISAP, it's Creative Research in the Sound Arts Practice. And this is sort of a hub of research activities related to sound. So its history is more involved in uh, sound arts practice, so practices which explore society and culture, history or politics through sound as a medium, um, but is gradually broadening its scope to include all forms of um, artistic practice which involve sound. So I, for instance, am a member of CRISAP as a composer of electronic music. Um, <clears throat> and CRISAP have a very, very close relationship with the MA Sound Arts and um, the three professors involved in CRISEP are involved in the um, uh, delivery of large uh, parts of that course. And likewise, I would very much imagine that um, members of CRISEP, myself included, will, will have quite a strong connection with the MA Music Production. Facilities. Um, I think this is one of the major um, things to highlight for MA Music Production. Um, because we have brand new studio facilities. So the list that you can see there are the sort of general facilities that are available right across the London College of Communication. So some of these spaces will be more relevant to you than others. So I would imagine the photography studio is probably not particularly relevant, um, but some of these other spaces are. So the Creative Technology Lab is a space that you can you can book and use for doing things which are very um, hands-on and practical. So some of our students go there for designing and building Arduinos and um, technologies which are going to be used for sound installations. Um, another one which is going to be extremely useful to you is this one called the Kit Room, which houses large parts of the um, technologies available for you. So they have dongles with an iLox, which are available for you to book to run pieces of software from outside of the studios. Uh, it's also where a large number of our microphones and recording devices are held for you to be able to book. And um, most of, mostly are available to take off site. So things that you can take away from the college and use. Um, some generally the very expensive things are kept so that they're only on site only. Um, but probably more interesting to you are the course specific um, 
facilities. So I'll run through these fairly quickly. Um, so that there's time for questions at the end. So we can see here is our uh, synth workbench. So this is something that's always in development. Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger as the years go by as we buy more bits of kit, but essentially it's a large um, set of synths which can be connected, um, patched and repatched in various ways and in cases can be controlled or not via the computer you can see on the right hand side. This is a bookable facility um, which is housed right next to our staff office. Um, this is uh, actually not a wonderfully useful photo of our performance lab um, which is a huge space and at the moment is one of the spaces where we do a great deal of the teaching and will be used for a lot of the um, MA music production teaching. So you can see there the large audience heritage desk. Um, what you can't see is on the left the racks of um, the, the, sort of the rack mounted equipment which goes along with that and on the right hand side the, the patch bay there. Um, but this is a, a very flexible space that we did a lot of our teaching in. It has a, a 16 channel um, sound card and a permanent rigged uh, octophonic, so eight channel ring, which is truss mounted above um, and is generally set up as well to do with 5.1, but it can be configured in anything up to 16 channels. Um, we use this quite a lot for delivering music production subjects because you can get a lot of people around this desk and look at signal flow and ways of using the, the desk and the various facilities, um, which then you can go and replicate in the individual studios that I'll come to in a moment. Um, this is connected to our composition studio. So just on the left-hand side of the um, screen, you can see that window there that leads um, directly through into uh, that performance lab. Um, composition Studio is often obviously quite small. It's a dedicated space for composing or recording or mixing music. And it's set up as a 7.1 space. So it can be configured very quickly for 5.1 or 7.1. But we've also roof mounted um, loudspeakers to make it an approximate um, Dolby Atmos. So you can mix for Dolby Atmos in there as well. Um, this space is probably going to be um, of interest to you if you're wanting to do solo projects more than group work. Um, you'll know that there's a window on the right here that leads through to a Foley room, which is linked to this uh, large screen on the back wall. So it could be used for dialogue, Foley, but things which are mixed media essentially. Um, but on the whole, this is used for composition or music production solo practices. Um, oops. Really, the major um, and exciting thing, if you're coming on the MA music production at LCC, is that we've just invested um, in five new, brand new studios. We had the opening for those yesterday. Um, although they actually started working a bit a month and a half ago. Um, we had our official college-wide opening, and these are a major new investment, brand new studios, purpose designed and built for LCC. Um, there are uh, three large control rooms, two of them with the Audient Heritage uh, desk that you can see there, and one with the Avid S4 controller. So two analog, one purely digital. The S4 room is um, set up for 7.1 mixing. Um, but again, it's a space that can theoretically be configured for um, other mixing opportunities. You can see there on the top of the mixing desk, we've got um, typically dual monitoring environments. So you can listen on different types of loudspeakers for the purpose of mixing and, and ultimately mastering. Um, and these spaces really, if you're interested in the type of music production, which is studio focused, will be your major um, point of, of working on your degree. 
very briefly, because I want to leave time for questions. Um, the, I just wanted to flag a couple of things. So the postgraduate hub, uh, a place which is designed to provide information to students transitioning to their MA course, um, providing careers and employability advice. So this is something which may be potentially useful for you in terms of um, uh, trying to encourage an understanding of teaching and learning opportunities and uh, careers opportunities. We have an industry mentoring scheme, which is um, attempting to connect all students at um, MA level with uh, industry professionals. But we do a lot of this in many respects within the course, the MA music production itself, um, in the sense of bringing guest lecturers, guest um, producers into the building, give you an opportunity to explore their work and talk to them about their work and how they got started and what what advice they would give for you to do similar things. Um, and briefly, a few statements on applications. Happy to answer questions about these, but um, essentially, um, so for the purpose of applying, obviously we need your personal details, details of your previous education and qualification or, and or employment history um, but the major thing here is this um, personal statement, which is listed there. Um, the personal statement's of huge value to us because we'd like to know what type of music production you're interested in. Music production, of course, is not one thing, but an umbrella term for many, many different things. Um, and those may be uh, large audio desk studio practices, but they can equally be laptop based live or mixed media types of practices so we're, we're interested right across the board um, and so the personal statement is a good opportunity to articulate what your core interests are it's a good place for you to explain where you hope to go in terms of your practice what you imagine doing beyond the course and a good place to list the kinds of um, skills and experiences you've had within the area of music production and um, and critical practice and critical thinking as well. Uh, we do ask for a portfolio, which accompanies your application, and this is an opportunity to um, present one or two pieces of work that you're particularly proud of. Now, recognizing that people come from many different backgrounds and many different educational or industry backgrounds, this can be very diverse we we imagine a very diverse series of submissions um but you're welcome to attach some sort of statement to that explaining what precisely your role in that was or how that particular um part of your submission came about so yeah i've talked about a portfolio so yeah collection of work essentially talked about personal statement um scholarships and funding well it's always nice to find funding to support studies. Um, there are a number of um, opportunities which are listed here. Um, bursaries, awards, scholarships, which are available for postgraduate study. My suggestion would be to um, have a look in detail at these schemes uh, while you're in the process of applying for the uh, MA. Some of them will be perhaps suitable for you and some not um, in terms of applying. So look quite carefully at the eligibility criteria. Um, but I very much encourage you to put in applications for, um, for scholarships and funding. And happy to discuss, discuss those with you. Um, although I've put a contact detail down there, which where you can find sort of a lot more information or have any questions answered about funding to help support your studies. So a list of contacts here, um, which I shall leave up on the screen because you might want to scribble these down. And of course, general inquiries, accommodation, student support, scholarships, fees. Um, but this is the point at which I say thank you for listening. And does anybody here have any questions that are specific to the course, the MA Music Production?
Thanks very much, Adam. Yeah, we have a few questions come in. Um, so the first one is, uh, how many days would we be on campus per week? I assume we'd spend a lot of time working on our own, but it'd be nice to have a sense of community as well. Yeah, I haven't timetabled the course yet, so I can't give you an absolute answer. Um, but the MA Sound Arts runs almost entirely on two days a week and those are quite full two days um, and I would hope to do something similar um, the idea would be two would be ideal three we might might happen if we can't quite time David all, all into two but it certainly wouldn't be beyond that um, I'm very mindful of the fact that community is as, as the question says very important and um, so for those core days of teaching we would bring everybody together but at the same time people also generally try to work to support their studies on the m8 um so that requires some days being completely clear what tends to happen with the m8 courses is that you have the core teaching on two of the days but perhaps the guest lecture on, a, on another one but um ideally it would run on just the two um so the so that would be the taught part, but of course, as the question preempted, there's a lot of uh, group or independent work, which then of course comes outside of the class time. So it would really be up to you when you um, book, say, the studio facilities. Um, there'll be a, an allotted amount of time per unit which you can book, um, and so there will be, I think, quite a, a substantial community around the around the studios and the labs at all times, not least because we have a BA music production as well, which will be accessing parts of the same uh, facilities. Great, thank you very much. Um, next question, is there a specific skill set that we should demonstrate in our portfolio? Um, no, uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's just important to be straightforward and honest about what you haven't, haven't done. It's it's more a point of interest for us and helps us to plan teaching um, to get an understanding of, of what you've done in your background. I mean, I would assume that everybody applying will have done some form of production practice. Some people may have done exclusively DAW-based music production, where some people may have done largely practical hands-on studio-based, but not very much in software. Other people may be expert coders and have done a lot of Max MSP things, for instance. There isn't really a skill set. And that's really one of the things that we've tried to design the course around, that ideally you would have a broad skill set by the end of the degree, which enables you to do many of these different forms of music production. But music production is, is nowadays so many dis distinct things that it's really important that you spend some time working on the thing that's most interesting to you. So no, I don't. I don't think a particular technical skill set is is the major point. It would be good to know what you have have looked at in the past and what you're interested in looking at in the future. Great, thank you. Um, the next question, and I realise this is a new course, so um, may have some uh, problems in answering this. But um, how many instructors do we have in our music production program, and what are their specialty areas? Yeah, a bit, bit tricky one to answer um, at the moment because this is a new course which is, is starting and um, we're, we've, we're currently advertising for a course leader for the course. Um, the, the existing staff, um, as you'll see on the website, well, that includes uh, me at the moment and um, also our course leader for the BA Music Production um, Diego and um, we would expect that the majority of the course will be delivered by the course leader and around about four or five uh, other people who are brought in for specific subject expertise so the way we tend to run the master's courses well maybe maybe giving you sound arts is a good example so sound arts is delivered uh, primarily by the course leader for sound arts uh, Thomas Gardner um, but alongside him, there are about four or five other academics and an additional three professors who help 
shape the curriculum. So they either drop in for individual sessions which are related to their expertise or they take whole chunks of modules again related to their expertise. So we'll be working on that model really. So for example, the course leader most likely will have expertise in um, music production as a practice and will probably most likely use a lot of the um, industry practices module to bring in uh, guests or additional uh, speakers who have expertise with the music industry in terms of designing um, designing projects, in terms of fulfilling briefs, uh, things about copyright, how to write an invoice or CV, how to get mechanical recording um, payments and so on. So we really sort of look to staff the course relative to, to people's expertise and, and where that isn't within the core of the team, then we bring people in who, who have that. Great, thank you. And a uh, final question. I know you touched on this earlier, Adam, but um, maybe you could go into a bit more detail. Do I need to have lots of technical skills before I start the course or will I be able to learn these while on the course? Um, I think that's probably an easier one to discuss with whoever's asked it by email. Um, the it's quite it's it's quite hard to say it really depends on the nature of what those technical skills are i mean i want to be straightforward in saying that this this course cannot possibly um aim to train everybody in every single piece of software or every type of studio practice and that isn't really its core remit um there are plenty of online resources if you want to learn a particular piece of software or um plenty of opportunities for having short courses in studios um so it's not fundamentally a training course for software or technical skills and I think there would be better ways of, of learning those kinds of skills frankly than doing an MA really this is an opportunity to develop your practice and to have some guidance on practice development so if there's a particular sort of technical or skill set that you need for that practice which you don't have then we would encourage and find ways to help you develop that which may be because a member of staff has expertise in that area, or maybe because there's already a suite of things that you can explore, which exist outside of the course that you can you can look to. Um, I think we're very well equipped technically in the sense that we've we've got a wide range of different um, DAWs, a wide range of different plugins, and a huge suite of um, hardware within the studio. So I think there's provision there in terms of the facilities, but it's not really a course which is um, focused on um, technical training as such. So the major part of technical training happens in that very first module because I think everybody needs to have a common ground um, across uh, lab-based practices and across studio-based practices. And then beyond that, you specialize relative to really what is appropriate and interesting for your um, creative voice or, or practice so if you're really interested in mixing as part of music production for uh, multi-channel or Dolby Atmos then you'll focus your technical skill acquisition on methods for mixing across those forms of media if you're more interested in sort of production practices associated with film then you would focus a lot more on how you work with no latency um, audio devices for film and so on so it really sort of depends beyond that initial stage um, what you're most interested in in developing. Great, thank you very much. I think that is all the questions we have. Um, so thank you very much for your time, Adam, and thank you very much everyone for joining us at home. Um, is there anything you want to say before we leave, Adam? No, just thanks very much for joining. I hope that was useful. Happy to receive any emails if I didn't cover something you wanted to ask. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, um, and hopefully see you soon. Thank Super, you. Thank you.